Jeremy Bentham was an English philosopher and founder of utilitarianism. He is described as a hedonist as he was heavily influenced by Epicurus, an ancient Greek philosopher who studied happiness and pleasure. Whereas, philosophers such as Thomas Aquinas and Joseph Fletcher believed that human beings were governed by God, or strove to do good and avoid evil, Bentham argued that human beings were governed by pleasure and pain. He famously wrote, Nature has placed mankind under the governance of two sovereign masters, pain and pleasure. It is for them alone to point out what we ought to do, as well as to determine what we shall do. By this, Bentham meant that when faced with a moral dilemma, one would always seek the outcome that would bring about the greatest happiness or pleasure. Bentham's theory is also described as consequentialist, as he is most concerned with the outcome. His theory can also be described as teleological as it's focused on results and telos purpose. Now, let's test your memory. Which two philosophers might you refer to, in your introduction to an essay on utilitarianism? That's right, Jeremy Bentham and Epicurus. There is no real need to refer to Aquinas and Fletcher, unless you were going to include them in the main body of your essay. Which three key words might you use, in your introduction? Hedonism, consequentialism and teleological. You may wish to make reference to pleasure and pain, but it may be best to save that for the main body of your essay and include the quote. Bentham states that when faced with a moral decision or dilemma, one must always ask themselves, what is the most useful thing to do in this situation? What decision will produce the greatest, benefit, pleasure, advantage, happiness or good? Bentham's theory is often summed up as, the greatest good for the greatest number. This is known as the principle of utility. An action is right if the outcome is useful. We often start the discussion with the trolley car dilemma. You witness a trolley cart hurtling down a track in the direction of five people. On another track, is a lone individual. You are positioned near a lever, and can divert the trolley cart, to avoid hitting the five and thereby causing five fatalities but this would mean the cart hits the lone individual. What would you do? What ought you to do? Which action would bring about the greatest utility? You might decide to do nothing, turn a blind eye, after all, if you weren't there, five people would have died anyway. Your inaction is still, however, action. You might decide to pull the lever. You do not wish to see five people die, when there could be only one. This is a utilitarian approach. You might decide not to pull the lever, because the one, lone person on the track doesn't deserve to die. This could be seen as a Kantian approach, valuing and respecting, the inherent dignity and worth of all individuals and their rights as human beings, even if they are a minority group. This may seem similar to the Christian approach of natural law, but it is not, whereas Aquinas believes an individual has dignity and worth based on imago de Kant believes that all humans are to be valued and respected because they are part of the human race. Kantian ethics and utilitarianism often go hand in hand and provide absolutist. The clean contrast. They are both non-religious theories. For the OCR level exam, you will have to be able to apply both theories to business ethics. Let's briefly look at how the two theories differ. Key scholars, Jeremy Bentham. Immanuel Kant. Type, teleological or consequentialist. Deontological. Principle, greatest good for the greatest number. Duty for duty's sake. Approach, relativist. Absolutist. So, how is this? Jeremy Bentham developed the hedonic or philosophic calculus to measure pleasure and pain. There are seven criteria to be met. Intensity, 
How intense is the pleasure or pain? Duration. How long does the pleasure or pain last? Certainty. What is the probability that the pleasure or pain will occur? Propinquity. Nearness or remoteness. How far off in the future is the pleasure or pain? Fecundity. What is the probability that the pleasure will lead to other pleasures? Purity. What is the probability that the pain will lead to other pains? Extent. How many persons are affected by the pleasure? Let's see if you are listening. Define the following words. Intensity. How intense is the pleasure or pain? Duration. How long does the pleasure or pain last? Certainty. What is the probability that the pleasure or pain will occur? Propinquity. Nearness or remoteness. How far off in the future is the pleasure or pain? Fecundity. What is the probability that the pleasure will lead to other pleasures? Purity. What is the probability that the pain will lead to other pains? Extent. How many persons are affected by the pleasure? Jeremy Bentham's utilitarianism is often referred to as act utilitarianism. Every situation is looked at independently and judged on its own merits. For those who agree with the greatest good for the greatest number principle, how about the practice of throwing the Christians to the lions in ancient Rome? The spectators, who were many, were certainly entertained. Does this make this practice right? Some may argue, yes, the greatest good for the greatest number. Whilst some may disagree, no, how can you call this a form of entertainment? The objection here might be based on the mistreatment of minority groups or the quality of the pleasure. This can be applied to many minority groups today, for example, the Grenfell Tower tragedy. This happened on Wednesday 14th of June, 2017. The people that lived in the tower were a minority group compared to the more affluent residents of the Kensington and Chelsea area. We will look at this further in business ethics. The Gurkhas, the Gurkhas are of Nepalese nationality. They are an integral part of the British Army, but did not get the same benefits as their British counterparts. Homosexual relationships Homosexual couples had to fight to get the same marital rights as heterosexual couples. The British government, a conservative government was voted in because the majority of the country voted for them. Minority parties such as the Greenpeace Party were not elected. There are many other minority groups affected by the utilitarian principle. John Stuart Mills developed Bentham's theory. His version is known as rule utilitarianism. He sought to implement general rules that would benefit society. He was also concerned with the quality of pleasure. Whereas Bentham was focused on the quantity of pleasure. He argued that there are higher and lower pleasures. Some may object to this idea as it involves judgment on what is higher and lower pleasure. Is reading Shakespeare better than reading to Pax, the rose that grew from the concrete? Is this not elitist? Bentham believed that all pleasures were equal. He stated the quantity of pleasure being equal, pushpin is as good as poetry. From the examples given, which would you consider to be the higher and lower pleasure? If I am asked, what I mean by difference of quality in pleasures? Or what makes one pleasure more valuable than another, merely as a pleasure, except its being greater in amount, there is but one possible answer. Of two pleasures, if there be one to which all or almost all who have experience of both give a decided preference, irrespective of any feeling of moral obligation to prefer it, that is the more desirable pleasure. He added, 
it is better to be a human being dissatisfied than a pig satisfied, better to be Socrates dissatisfied than a fool satisfied. And if the fool, or the pig, are a different opinion, it is because they only know their own side of the question. John Stuart Mill's Revised Bentham's Utilitarianism Mills believed that pleasure and happiness alone wasn't an acceptable way to determine the rightness or wrongness of an action, as some pleasures were no different to animal instincts, such as sex, food and alcohol. Just because the majority of people enjoy certain things, does it make it morally right or permissible? Overindulgence in food can lead to obesity and gluttony. Overindulgence in sex can lead to diseases broken relationships and unwanted pregnancies. Henry Sidgwick questioned whether it was possible to distinguish between higher and lower pleasures and believed that the process of deciding was intuitive. For the OCR level exam, you are only required to know and be able to differentiate between act and rule utilitarianism. The following philosophers we are going to look at provides additional information including these philosophers in your essay could impress an examiner. A modern approach to utilitarianism was brought about by Richard Mervyn Hare, Richard Brandt, and Peter Singer in the 20th century. This is known as preference utilitarianism. This philosophy not only took into the account the views of majority groups, but also minority groups, who were often overlooked by the founders of utilitarianism. It looked at whether the needs of all individuals were being met. Hare said equal preferences count equally, whatever their content. Hare believed that a decision maker needed to stand in someone else's shoes and imagine what they would want. He also argues for universalizability. Singer sought to minimize pain and suffering, rather than just focus on maximizing happiness and pleasure. This links to the practice of feeding Christians to the lions. Singer said, our preferences cannot count any more than the preferences of others. Everyone's preferences were given equal value. In saying this, Singer encouraged decision makers to take the view of an impartial spectator. Richard Brand defended rule utilitarianism but later on focused on to preference utilitarianism. He looked at the cognitive process that goes on before deriving at a decision. What influences your preference? He rejected any preferences that was influenced, such as peer pressure and advertising and not being true to your values. For example, the film Black Panther was very popular at the box office, the cast promoted the film well as did celebrities, it was most popular amongst people from ethnic minority backgrounds. Films are often shown in certain cinemas for a certain amount of time. Now. If you were in a meeting to discuss the length of time Black Panther should be shown in the cinema, compared to other Hollywood blockbusters, would you argue that it be given more time at the cinema or not? What is influencing your decision? Is it real to your values? Are you free of external influences? Let's compare act, rule, and preference utilitarianism. Who are the key philosophers? Did you get it right? Jeremy Bentham, John Stuart Mill, R. M. Hare, Peter Singer, Richard Brandt. If Bentham's utilitarianism is summed up as the greatest good, for the greatest number, what is John Stuart Mill's? The greatest happiness for the greatest number. If this is considered teleological, what is this? Deontological because rules take priority. Main focus, the individual. Main focus, universalization the common good. Quantitative, qualitative. Application hedonic calculus, higher, and lower pleasures. And now, for some opponents of the theory. W. D. Ross argues that utilitarianism ignores the importance of duty. One must weigh up motive and outcome. He argued that prima facie duties are more important. Bernard Williams uses the example of Jim and the Indians to illustrate that we should not forsake integrity and personal responsibility even if it leads to unwelcome consequences. 
John Rawls argues that utilitarianism is too impersonal and does not consider the rights of individuals.